being in isolation and having to stay home by yourself is not really anything new to us. Kelly Viz may be able to cope with isolation better than other teenagers their age. We have dealt with isolation in one form or another before. When I was first taken into care, I was a bit, it was weird because I was kind of, I was happy that I was away from where I was, but I wasn't happy because I was so alone and no one prepared me for any of that loneliness. No one, no one even really knew that I felt so lonely. Like I was just by myself in my room most of the day by myself. Generally, when you go into care, it's an isolating process. You kind of lose connection to the outside world. The people who meet us tend to prejudge us. Because they know you are in care, people treat you differently. There's a lot of stereotypes regarding um, care leavers. Police tends to prejudge us. There's a lot of stigma around being in care. And then when you come out of care, you still have all of that stigma. If you lose your family when you go into care, then you've lost that connection as well. You don't have a support system. From when I lived in a hostel, I can remember many times a variety of different people self-isolating because of the fear of being judged. Naturally, you, you turn into yourself and you completely kind of, do, in order to protect yourself, you lock up your emotions and you don't talk about them. It can be quite difficult to make connections and lasting connections. People don't really know how to talk to us. People can't relate. Because of this, naturally, people exclude us or they're not as comfortable around us, so we're not really included. My experience is different. Like, I live by myself. Everyone else lives with their parents. When we were in hostels, we didn't go home to our family. We didn't go home and have that people around us. Many of us would go home and just sit in our rooms by ourselves. And, you know, those patterns continue, you know, as you get older. So I think that can sometimes cause you to kind of isolate yourself because it's a sort of a way to protect yourself against being hurt. On the other hand, when you have experienced certain levels of trauma, it can be quite negative to be in a space on your own. And I think it can be a real trigger for things like anxiety and depression. Lockdown is affecting my mental health in both a positive and a negative way. It's having um, a kind of a mixed effect on my mental health. Lockdown for me has been quite difficult since I don't speak to family members and most of my friends that live on the other side of London. For me, it's definitely been something that's been an adjustment. I'm feeling more isolated. Some days I'm really happy, I'm really, really feeling really good. I'm feeling a bit more alone. I wake up, I'll work out, I'll do loads of things. In a rut. But there are other days where I have, I will spend the entire day or night in bed. Being away from your support system and your family and not being able to see, you know, the people that make you happy and that bring you joy and, you know, who will be able to lift you up in times when you're sad that can be really difficult because at the end of the day when you do want to go out and you can't it is sad or when you do miss your friends and you can't hug them it is sad i think everyone feels sad at times in this moment i don't tend to try and dwell in my sadness and i think that's where being a care leaver is helping me because I know how it is to handle being sad and I know what I have to do to not be in that moment. My sadness tends to hit me when my son is asleep uh, because that's when I feel more alone because I'm not being kept busy. I'm just there and I don't really want to turn the TV on and just see all the bad news. I think if lockdown happened like a couple years ago, it would have been really bad for me. I had all the bad loneliness and the depression and 
like the struggling to get out of bed and whatever but now I'm like so much more confident and so much happier being on my own I'm used to being on my own I don't even think I'd like living with other people. For me personally, I'm enjoying the self-isolation. I enjoy the fact that I don't need to focus on the fact that I have to leave the house, something that's so hard for me, to go to uni or to go to work and stuff. Because right now, those factors are taken out. Right now, I get to truly do what I want to do, which is stay at home and work on myself and just do the work, my uni work, and get things done. Lockdown is making me feel grateful. And I say that because it's only since being in lockdown that I've realized how fortunate I am. Being a parent is in a way a blessing during lockdown because it gives me something to do every day. I don't have time to just sit on my ass going, I have nothing to do. I have found myself being very grateful that I have, you know, amazing people in my life and an amazing support system, you know, freedom, somewhere to live. Um, I just, you know, I feel like in times like this when people are dying, it's so unnecessary and so, you know, um, juvenile to complain about, you know, things that can't be helped. I'm not sure if I've got many tips. I have a lot of experience in terms of isolating. So the tips I'd give is to work out, try and create a new routine. Routine is crucial in these times. Keep yourself busy. I've decided to start drawing again. You have to wake up on time, try to stretch, meditate. I try and make sure that I make the, make the most out of my days, so I get up early. Yeah, you need to be actually going to bed at a normal time and waking up at a normal time, because otherwise you just sleep the day away and then wake up depressed. I'm trying to get back a routine where I'm not just sitting around doing nothing. So I'd say try and go outside at least once a day. Make sure you go for a walk every day. Do yoga, maybe get a workout in, eat a good breakfast, you know, try to plan out what you want to eat for the day, maybe cook it. I read a lot, um, I sing, you know, put on music, I make dinner, you know, I cook lunch. Giving yourself challenges, giving yourself goals, I'm keeping myself busy and, you know, active as much as I can. Check up on other people and make sure you have people to talk to. Don't look at the news every day. Just put the TV on for some background noise. You have all this extra time and I think it's the best time when you're isolating to really allow yourself to release and reset and build healthier habits. It's hard to motivate yourself to do things, but honest to God, that is the only way you're going to go out and feel better. Remind yourself that you are human and this is a very, very big situation to adapt to and it's very, very difficult. Being alone is a good thing. You get used to your own company. It's not necessarily lonely. I've just been trying to kind of keep my spirits up and do as many Zoom calls <laughs> as I can. <laughs> it's not the real thing, but uh, it'll have to do for now. I think what I missed most is going to see my friends. I think it's the hugs I miss. <laughs> the one thing I miss the most is actually being able to have the freedom to go out whenever I want. Once I have to leave lockdown and get back to normal life, I feel like it will probably, it may possibly be slightly more difficult than it usually is. The first thing I'll do is grab my son, grab all his friends and just take them to the park and let them free. The longer I stay indoors, the more difficult it is to go out and the more scarier it is. For myself, the first thing I'll do for lockdown is clubbing and getting drunk. Never thought I would miss that as much as I do. And I actually do miss working. <laughs> I can't imagine after several weeks of being able to just stay indoors and feel completely safe. Afterwards, I'm, I'm sure my anxiety levels must, will probably rise to more higher, higher than I've ever probably had in a while. So I'm not really looking forward to that. I want to have a party. <laughs> I really want to have a housewarming because I never got to have a housewarming. I think another thing I want to do is get my head on. The first thing I'm going to do when lockdown is over, as much as I want to run to Nando's and eat everything on the menu and just like watch a million things in the cinema and just, you know, scream and shout outside. I think the first, the first thing I'm going to do 
is give everyone a 10 minute hug. I'm literally going to squeeze the life out of all my friends and the family because I have missed human contact so much.